Hi everyone, welcome to another dose of math medicine. Your first aid kit in mathematics. Don't forget to share, like, type your comment or question below and subscribe for more math meds. Today we will talk about cumulative frequency curves, estimated median, quartiles, percentiles and frequency density. But before we go to them, let's take a look at some other statistical measures from our previous discussions. Question number 10. The table shows information the heights of a group of 42 students. From 150 centimeters to 160 centimeters, there are 5 students. From 160 cm to 165 centimeters, there are 9 students. From 165 cm to 180 centimeters, there are 18 students. And from 180 centimeters to 190 centimeters, there are 10 students. Question letter A. Using the mid values, calculate an estimate of the mean height of the students. So, to find the estimated mean in this grouped data, we must determine first the middle values of each class interval. You might ask why take the middle values? Since all the scores found in each interval can be just anything within the range, the best value that can estimate or represent them is the middle value, in the same reason that we base it to 5 to round up or down a number. To find the mid value, we must take the average or mean of lower and upper values in each interval. For the first class interval, 150 plus 160 then divided by 2 would give a mid value of 155. For the second class interval, we add 160 and 165 and then divide their sum by 2, we will get 162.5. And we do the same thing for the third and fourth intervals, which are 172.5 and 185 respectively. So to find the estimated mean is to multiply the mid value of each class interval to the corresponding frequency. 155 times 5 plus 162.5 times 9 plus 172.5 times 18 plus 185 times 10. This sum is going to be divided by the total frequency, which is 42. This gives us a sum of 7192.5. Then dividing this by 42 gives an estimated mean of 171.25 centimeters. Question 10 letter B. Write down the interval that contains the lower quartile. Lower quartile is the located in the first 25% of frequency. So, 25% of 42 students or we can also take 1 fourth of 42 is 10.5. This means that the lower quarter or Q1 is located between 10th score and the 11th score. Looking at the frequency, there are 5 scores in the first interval, added it with 9 scores from the 160 to 165 interval, we already have a total of 14 total scores, we went beyond the 10th and 11th scores. Hence, the lower quartile and found within this 160 centimeters to 165 centimeter interval. Number 10 letter C. Complete the histogram below to show the information in the table. One column has already been drawn for you. If you will take a look closely vertical axis of the graph provided for us, it is labeled frequency density. Hence we must compute for the frequency density first. Frequency density is equal to the class frequency divided by the class width. So for the first interval, the density is 5 divided class width, which is 10. So, the density is 0.5. For the second one, 9 divided by the class width 5, the density is 1.8. For the third interval, the frequency 18 is divided by the class width 15, the density here is 1.2. And for the last interval, the frequency 10 divided by the class width 10, the density is 1. Again, just to remind ourselves. Frequency density is equal to the class frequency divided by the class width. Sometimes, others call it class size instead of class width. But they mean just the same thing. Moving on, we will now do the frequency density diagram. The first interval's density has already been done. For easy reference later on, we just label this part as 0.5 being between 0 and 1, while this we label with 1.5 as the number between 1 and 2. So for the second interval 160 to 165 centimeters, the density is 1.8. So we will draw a rectangular box in this range up to the height of 
If you notice the scale of the frequency density axis, there are 20 parts between number 1 and number 2, making each line to be 0.1. So if this is 1.5, carefully find 1.8. Six lines above 1.5. Here. Let us shade the box we made for this interval for easy checking of the width and height. We will do the same thing for the next two intervals. Interestingly, we can actually get some information from this frequency density that is not readily available in the frequency table. Let's say we want to find the number of students whose height is 170 centimeters or more. One of the advantages of a frequency density diagram is that it is assumed that the scores are equally spaced out inside each box. Hence, we can estimate the frequency from any range within the interval. Since we are interested in finding the total number of students above 170 centimeters, this can be found in the last two class intervals, namely the 165 to 180 centimeters and 180 to 190 centimeter intervals. So, we will make a box representing 170 to 180 centimeters and find its covered frequency by getting its area. It is obvious that the entire box for 180 to 190 centimeter interval must be counted. It is already given from the table above that the number of students from 170 to 180 is 10. The frequency in this interval is represented by the area of the box we have drawn in this interval. To check, we can take the width of this interval which is 10 and the height of the rectangle which is the density equal to 1 if area of a rectangle is base times height. In this case, frequency is equal to the class width times the frequency density so the total number of students whose height is the 10 students from the last class interval plus the number of students from the 170 to 180 centimeter interval we can find the frequency from 170 centimeters to 180 centimeters by taking the class width which is 10 and the frequency density which is 1.2 and multiply them so 10 students from 180 to 190 centimeter interval plus 12 students from 170 to 180 centimeters gives us a total of 22 students whose height is 170 centimeters or more. Here are other examples of involving frequency density.